Hi, I'm Siobhan and welcome to the Blind Brook and welcome to our eel installation day or eel net installation. Um, I have here behind me our big eel net or one other name that we use for that is a fike net, F-Y-K-E. Um, so normally you don't get to see what the net looks like when it's in the water because it's kind of submerged for the next couple of months but we are about to put it into the brook. So this is a great chance to see what it looks like um, when it's not in the water and kind of see what is what inside of the net. So, I have right here a few lovely pieces of metal. These pieces are going to be holding the net in place. I can show you where they are going to go. Both ends of the net are these really wide wings that we call them. Have these loops. The rebar or the metal is going to go inside of these loops on both ends and hold the net in place down there in the brook and the best spot when you pick it up. So hopefully if we take a hammer and hammer the rebar in really well, um, the net will stay in place for most of March, probably into April, maybe into May as well. Um, now, the reason we are putting the net into the brook in the first place is because we are trying to catch all of the little glass eels, which is kind of like the teenage stage of the American eel. We are trying to catch all of those eels as they are swimming up the blind brook from the sound right now. Um, this is the time of year when they are starting to migrate. So we want to catch them early and get as many eels inside of our net as we can. Um, and what we're going to do with the eels is just count them every day, weigh them, get an idea of how many eels are swimming through our brook, um, and then we'll report those findings to um, the Hudson River Eel Project. So when the eels are swimming up the net, or sorry, when we up the brook, they hopefully will get caught inside of the opening right here. The reason that it's so wide right here is that so the net will cover the entire width of the brook. We want to direct the eels inside of this opening right here. Now once the eels are inside the net, they won't really be able to get out until we go through the pig canal. So what they're going to do is swim down into this really narrow part. You can see that the net gets really skinny right here. And right in here in the net, it's hard to see um, from the outside, but there is a big piece of mesh. So the eels are going to get stuck right about here. Now, when we come down to count the eels every day, sometime in the afternoon, we are going to untie this end of the net, which will normally be tied to a big rock that's down in the brook to make sure the net isn't moving around um, or kind of flowing with the current. We want it stretched out. The first thing we'll do is untie the net so that we can reach our arms way down in here. It's gonna be a little wet and a little bit mucky when we do this, but it's pretty fun. And we are going to be able to open up that big piece of mesh where the eels got caught down in there. And then we're gonna reach our arms right inside. <laughs> and you'll know if you're feeling eels because it'll feel a little bit like touching a big piece of spaghetti or really a tiny piece of spaghetti because they're really only about an inch, about the size of your finger. Um, and very, very skinny, uh, but they are kind of slimy and slippery, just like a piece of spaghetti would be. So we'll take out each little eel um, one at a time. We'll put them in a bucket of water so that they can swim around a little bit, and then we'll take them out, put them in a scale, weigh them, count them, record our data. And then, of course, once we are done counting and weighing them, we're going to return them all to the brook so that they can keep swimming up the brook and go on to wherever their destination is. <laughs> So this is what our net looks like right now, and very soon it will be in the brook. So hopefully at the end of today, it will start catching some.